Hey everybody, Charles here with Premier Marine. In today's video, we're just going to go over some real basic SimRad setup, making sure that it's configured properly for the boat that you're on. And then we'll go further in depth on other videos on setting up specific functions of the SimRad and customizing it to your specific options. First thing we're going to do is just power in the unit on. So in the bottom left corner, you hold down on the, on the screen where it's got that little power symbol. That'll boot up. So this is a 12-inch SimRad, our, our Go 12, which is standard on level 4 and 5 boats. But it'll be real similar, this, this kind of setup will be very similar for our Go 9, which is standard on level 3s, and our optional Go 7, which is our 7-inch standard on, or optional on our level 2 boats. So this setup will be beneficial for those different setups as well. So this is the first screen that comes up. And some of these screens may not come up depending on how much setup was actually done at the factory or whether someone else has already played with the system. But in general, this would be the first screen that would come up. Um, if you don't see some of these screens, don't worry. It should already have been set up properly at the factory. So we're going to select English, which is the, Eng the language we want to go with. You can always select whatever you want. Click Yes. This is just a generic screen that pops up pretty much every time you, you turn the sim right on, which is just warning you about making sure you're operating the boat properly and in a safe fashion and not looking at the screen when you should be looking at the water. So we'll click Accept there. Now let's go into Device Configuration. So we are going to want to configure this now. So we'll click Configure this device. And then we'll select Miles Per Hour, Miles and Feet. If you want different units, you can always do that. Um, as far as Transducer goes, the SimRad will automatically determine the right transducer depending on what's plugged in. So it should already be highlighted. So we'll click on that one. And then the configuration is complete. We'll click Finish. That part's complete. The next prompt is the networks asking for data sources to be set up. So we will want to do that. We'll click OK there. The system's ready to auto-select data sources, but it even says before starting, make sure that everything is powered on. So we want everything that the SimRed is going to find to be powered on. So we're going to want to make sure the stereo is powered on. We're going to want to make sure the engine key switch is in the on position so that the engine's powered up and that the SimRed can find it. We'll make sure the stream wheel is lit up properly. Anything that's on the NEMA network, we want to be powered on to make sure that the SimRed can communicate with it. Once everything's powered on, we'll click Start. It'll go through all its initialization. It auto-selects everything that we talked about, and it'll save you a ton of time in trying to configure things later. So it's completed, so we click Close on that. Next thing it's asking is if we want to use the map card that's inserted. So coming from the factory, we insert a map card into every boat, and that gives you better lake data for the boats that you're on. So yeah, we do want to use that C map card, so we'll click Yes on that. We'll do another video later on specifically on double-checking, making sure that the map card is inserted and that you're using it, so we'll do another video of that later on. So now we're into device registration. In general, I'd say that it's better to leave this for the consumer to do. You really maybe don't want to do it as a dealer. It's more for the consumer to register the SimRed to their boat so that they can get updates later. So I would click close and not register now. It'll pop up again next time they do it until they register. So click close. It's kind of the most generic setup of the, sim of the SimRed screen. Now we're going to go and double check that everything's kind of set up properly. So we'll go, to, go back to the main home screen. Then we'll click in the the settings tab in the top left. We're going to scroll all the way down to network. Click on network. Then we'll go to device list and click there. This is showing that's everything on the NEMA backbone, everything that the SimRed has found. It's showing us the fluid level sensor, which is our fuel tank sensor. Oh, you see it's, it's saying no GPS fix. That's, that's an alarm that's coming up because we're inside with this boat, so the SimRed unit can't find a GPS signal. So through the concrete and everything, it's not going to be able to get a GPS connection. But as soon as we put this boat outside, it won't alarm and it should be just fine. So we'll just click close on that for now. So the fluid level sensor is a fuel tank. The next five items are actually built into the screen itself. So they're all Go 12 initial functions. They're just showing here. Um, it's the navigation, the GPS, all that stuff that's actually built into the unit. That looks all good. Next thing you'll see is the MM100. That's the JL Audio Mini Master 100 the head unit for the stereo. So you see that, you know you're good to go there. Last one is the Navico controller, which would be the steering wheel with all the functions that communicate to the Navico SimRed screen. Um, so that all looks good. From there, we're going to go a little, into a little bit more generic setup. We're going to go to the boat settings. From network, we're going to scroll up. We're going to go to system. We see boat settings. We'll click there. We're going to enter all the information into the specific boat that we're on. So this will change for everything, depending on the boat you're on. This particular boat is 29 feet in length, so we'll enter 29 there. 
the draft of the boat is it's probably about 18 inches, which is a safe bet. Um, we'll say two feet just to be safe. You know, it's about half the tube diameter, but we'd rather have a little bit safer. So the width is 10 feet wide on this particular boat that we're on. Eight and a half is standard, but this boat's a 10 foot wide. And the height of this boat with the bimini is roughly, we'll say about 12 feet. Once again, just for safety, because you can have alarms built in so that if you get into too shallow water, if there's a low bridge that the Simrad screen knows, it will give you an alarm. But we're not going to go through that right now. But just in general, we'll set that up. So we'll click Save. Um, that's the generic boat setup. We'll go back to the main screen. And then we'll go further in depth on other videos about more specific functions and customization. If you have any questions on any of the setup stuff with the Simrad, reach out to our customer service, and we'll be happy to help you out with that.